brothers. Prototype commanders in the emerging field of psychic warfare. I was the favorite. I gave them what they wanted. I gave them blood. They say the synchronicity with my mother made me homicidal. He was the first prototype. His enhanced reflexes made him an unstoppable killer. When my brother found me, he put a bullet in my head. But our psychic link never broke. Like a curse, bound by blood. We know you killed your brother. Kill. Captain Finn, Armacam is everywhere. I need help. Where is she hiding? Fear is a series I've never really gotten into. The whole thing of the fear never really turned me on. Getting scared, you know, it was never really for me. But Fear 3 seemed like something I had to try. Yeah, it was worth it. The campaign is pretty good throughout. You can save yourself pretty easily by going into a slow-mo type of mode. And the only problem I really had with it was following up with the story. They do it, they try and catch you up and show you that you've been caught and stuff, but it, it doesn't really help. I still feel like I'm missing some part of what happened between Fears 1 and 2. But otherwise, the campaign's pretty darn good. Throughout my two chapters of coming through so far, I haven't found any glitches or anything. But that's only because I don't I'm not looking at it. It's not my type of game. But the whole essence you'll notice probably by the way is that it doesn't look as real. Which is to help it scare. It does help it dramatically. And the slow-mo is turn on a bullet. Um, unlike most games. And not just a cutscene, but as part of your character. He's enhanced, so he can turn it on and off, but he has to recharge, of course, or else you'd be unstoppable if you could just have it on the whole game. And the whole thing with these sirens blaring, on, the smoke here. kind of on the top, the darkness, and the graphics really stop me from going into that one area, keeping me from doing certain things. It's just how it's the overall appearance of the game. And something like this, with the body on fire, and the arms wailing, really impressed me. Especially the fact that the burned away skin shows off the tendons, muscles, and his face, arms, legs. You can see his teeth. The target can be put down. Disregard locals and indiscriminate targeting is being And it also has a very compelling multiplayer with four modes, but I only caught two of them throughout my playthrough. Uh, one is like a zombie type of mode, but you can actually go outside of the base, and um, one of the purposes to that is that you pick up these crates. So instead of just buying ammo off a wall or something weird like that, you bring the crates back to your base, and you get um, extra guns and ammo for your current gun. And you get um, better guns like rocket launchers, and sniper rifles, and shooting pistols. I also played uh, Capture the Soul, which is something feels where you capture an AI, his body, and you're some type of grim reaper creature. And you kill other AIs or other players and get the souls. But you can't just get the soul from possessing you. Yeah. So that's the There's also other AIs such as shotgunners or a little bit more heavily armed and uh, body protected and riot shielders that have only limited vision uh, with their riot shield and uh, a gun, of course, on the side. And then there's also these weird this zombie like creatures nicely. that you can control. The rest. Uh, swipe and slash. To just kill their victims. Squad, move in on him! Everyone, hide! Your ass 
Scary parts, you gotta get it. You gotta hunt! 